Baby doll sprinkles, you've joined me again. I'm always thinking about the next euphoric crypto top because I want us to maximize our opportunity here. The low hanging fruit will constantly be eaten up and there might not even be that much low hanging fruit in crypto walking forward. I mean, we hope there is, but there's no guarantees, right? So what I like to do is I always like to walk through the shoes of the ghosts of the past. I want to see what was everyone feeling? What were they seeing? What did the Bitcoin chart look like? We look at the footprints and maybe we can learn a thing or two going forward. So I have the early Bitcoin chart here, right? This is early days, 2012. And I just want you to know that, you know, by the time you watch this video, yeah, maybe Bitcoin went to zero, maybe went up to 20K, 30, 40, who cares, man? It doesn't matter. The main point is, the main important point is that we're not selling until euphoria. I don't care what happens in between. Everything that happens in between is a distraction, okay? Because it's going to make you think twice about the very end. And that's where your goal is. The only two things that matter is the day you click buy and the day you click sell. That's it. You can't control anything in the middle. So this is interesting, right? I have a log chart. You know, whatever I put on a, on a, let's put on a linear chart, friends. This is Bitcoin, right? 2011. It hits up here. You know who bought up here? You know who bought up there? Da Vinci and Richard Hart. That's right. They bought up here. They made the top. And then, okay, but let's look at this, man. See, anybody who was trying to use stocks and fractals from the stock market, they would have got this so wrong. Look at this, man. What I'm looking at here is I'm looking at the shape that Bitcoin made, right? It does this vertical rally off the bottom, right? So here's the crazy part. If you're long anywhere in the middle here, you're buying and you believe, the unfortunate part is when we start going up, you know this part, see this green part, the commentators, so the, the macro guys, the traditional finance guys, the sideland guys, the perma bears, and just the poories, the people who are poor in general, they are all going to refrain from referencing the chart. What they will do is they will just look at the percentage gain. So that's what they'll do. What they'll say is they're like, pfft. How is this scam? And what they'll do is they'll go to the exact bottom tick and they'll put it to the top. They're like, this is way overextended. A 262%, just a bear market rally, dude. That's what they're going to say, okay? And it's going to upset you. You know why? Because you're like, oh man, I didn't think $7 Bitcoin was expensive because I was buying at 15, 13, 12. And so you are then going to have to think to yourself, how do you battle through it, you know? You could just shut off all the media and don't listen to it, but you are going to hear these words. This information is going to come your way, and I will show you how I deal with it, okay? And what I do is one simple trick. I give them a poopy emoji, all right? That's about it. That's it. That's right. Everything they say, all the squiggly lines they draw, all the reasons they do when they say yes, no, up, down, left, right, black, white, gray, blue, yellow, you're a poopy head. And that's it. You are a poopy head. They're trying to psych you out of your position. They're trying to tell you that this recovery ain't a real recovery. It's a bear market rally for us to go lower. But you have to acknowledge that they're poopy heads. And you know, I'm going to make this bigger for you so you can get the idea. They're poopy heads, okay? And don't ever forget that. They're just poopy heads. Look what would have happened. You know, I mean, you're looking at this chart. You don't know what the com what's coming on the right, okay? You could have easily made this case easily friends that that bitcoin here was going to go down lower you see this part you could have easily made this case that you know oh oh i can't bounce it's going to go lower and then bottom out very easily the squiggly lines on the chart but we know history right history wrote the story differently it kept going up now this is where it gets interesting bitcoin halvening was here okay bitcoin halvening right i mean it looks it, it looks so extended right i mean look at this look at this friends this is why your squiggly lines on the chart. And hey, man, I'm a day trader. I trade, man. I'm a scalper, all right? I love trading. But I'm telling you now, you're only going to get this thing right once. And if you get it wrong once, well, you can't go back in time. This just looks like it's such an obvious, oh, we're going down to the floor, right? But look what happened, man. It just kept going up. Wow. Weren't you embarrassed? 
So you're going to have to fight these things over and over and over again, man. Everyone's going to say, hey, hey, the thing's going to go down and more down. And you're going to have to believe in crypto growing, okay? So I'm always thinking about the next euphoric top. Because I'm walking through the patterns. I look at the depression. And now I'm like, okay, we understand it. Like, get, you have to get on my level here. The euphoria, that part doesn't even matter unless you're long. Do you get me? Like, who cares if Peter Schiff is bullish at the top? Who cares if the Bitcoin spot ETF launches at $180,000 Bitcoin and it's literally the top? Okay? Who cares if it's exactly four years after the top and everything lines up? Who cares if you're not long? It doesn't matter. And who cares if you weren't long during the depression? Who cares? Even if you're up a 2 or 3 or 4x, it's nothing. You wasted this opportunity. If you want like a 2 or a 3x, go do a leverage trade, man. Wait for the next stock market dip. Go and do leverage and put your freaking leverage long in and good luck. Okay? Obviously, please don't do that. That's just tongue in cheek. But you get the point. Don't, don't think that this euphoria top, oh, wow, yeah, it's going to come in the future. It means nothing, Habib, if you're not long. You have to be buying the depression. Now, I know just by the maths, most people aren't going to buy in the depression. Only like 5 to 10% do. The next, now you have to ensure that ensure yourself, okay, okay, I didn't want to buy in the depression. What's my next step? Okay, well, you've got to be a disbelief and a hope buyer. You've got to buy in the disbelief and hope phase. You're in the next 20 to 30%. Okay, so the first 10%, let's get this, let's get this squiggly lines up, right? So the first 10%, actually, let's zoom in. Right, you're watching this in the future. It's Feb today, all right? You're watching this video in the future. The 10% only buy the bottom, friends. 10%, okay? Then you are going to have to see, I don't know, did Bitcoin go down or up? It doesn't matter. Just uh, as time goes, when you're trying to guess this euphoria top, the next 20% are coming in, and you're going to have to get up and down and get rinsed. You know, up and down and up and down, and we don't know what's going to happen, right? And I'm not joking. The last 60 to 70%, literally buy the top because that's what humans do we see things get more valuable so it's a reflexive system and we're like okay this thing is more valuable price go up therefore i think it's going to keep going up that's what happens all right so you got to get that 10 percent part man this is the part that matters okay now it doesn't just mean buy bitcoin obviously get ethereum get chaining get hex Get anything you believe in. If you like Cardano, if you really think CZ is going to take over with Binance, if you like Matic, okay, you can go follow me and my closest stuff. But I understand most people, it, it's too much of a paradigm shift. How I operate and the edge I look for is like so ultra hyper moonshot. It's fading the crowd to the most extreme. People can't possibly get on my level straight away. I completely understand that. And that's okay, man. I don't expect you to. Just keep an open mind, all right? You keep an open mind. You'll do well. So look at this. Let's read through, read through this together. So I'm always thinking about the next crypto cycle top. And I know it's going to bull trap everyone. You know it is, man. Same it does in the stock market because when value goes up, people give them more value. They eventually go too hard, right? And here I go. I think most players will fixate interest rate hikes as the reason we went down in 2022. Now think back to yourself. If I asked you and I asked 100 people in a room, okay, I said to them, hey, why did crypto go down in 2022? I promise you, 99 of them out of 100 will say it was the Fed that rose interest rates. The Fed put interest rates up and they did QT and we went down. And the only person in that room who says no to that would be me. But I'm not saying that because I'm a smarty pants. It's because I know from the history of stocks and everything, I know how the game works. The game works like this, okay? We go up and we go down. When we go up, people assign a narrative. When we go down, people assign a narrative. The up and the down part, they're pretty much as good as random as you can get. Okay? I know this is such a paradigm shift. And trust me, when I hear this for the first time many, many, many years ago, I was like, Ugh! no, that's a lie. That's a lie. I said, no, it must be true because it makes sense. Do you, know what, you want to know why it makes sense? Because you can go sit here and go track every green candle on a monthly and every red candle on a monthly. The news is good on the green and the news is bad on the red. Every time. 100% of the time. Go check it. 
Go check it yourself. You get three green monthly candles in a row, it's good news. How come there's no bad news when we go up? How come there's no good news when we go down? Huh, right? The market's a beast, man. It's always pricing in the future. It's about people's future expectations. It's not today, okay? Newbies are living in the present. The people who are just better than newbies, they're living in the past. And then the people who are actually winning, so they get all the newbies and the mega newbies, all their money gets actually sent to the people predicting the future, living in the future. That's what we're here to do. That's what I do, okay? We're here to guess the future. We don't have to guess it right. We just got to say, hey, I don't think I'm going to be dead in six months. I don't think crypto is going to be dead in three years. I think it's going to be bigger than what it is today in the next five years. See these very basic assumptions and you're like, oh, oh, but what do I do? What do I do? You know what to do, baby doll. You get long and you stay long. That's it. it it's not more complicated than that, okay? So, euphoria trap. Euphoria trap. Always thinking about the euphoria trap and the news cycle. So I want to get into the mindset of a, you know, may, maybe we do peak out 2024. You never know. Maybe we go to 2025. Maybe, maybe we get wrecked in 2025. There's like a blip. And then we have to wait till 2026. I'm ready for anything, okay? We can top out 24, 25, 26, right? No one's expecting us to run to 2030. Oh my God, right? I'm just letting you know, okay? Anything's on. The, anything's possible, okay? So we have to go off the crowd's emotions. So at the tops, people are going to not latch on to any narrative. So I'm already ready, man, you know? I'm, I'm postulating here. This is me speculating. I'm like, you know, in, in the, you know, look at this big giant golden finger, right? At that top, why were we all holding? We were all holding because zero interest rates, QE was on, okay? That's why we were holding. So, that's why we went up. We're like, oh, 0% interest rates, QE. And then why do we go down? We went down, what's everyone gonna say? Interest rate hikes, QT, no, all right? So, I'm letting you know. This is my observation. I know what the crowd thinks. All right, we got to get ahead of the crowd. That's why you're listening to me. Okay, highest value content. Bill, like, bell, subs subscribe button. You know, you know the drill. Okay, so the crowd thinks the Fed rules crypto, and they rule the market. That's what the crowd thinks. That's good. That's very good for us, friends, because if a bull trap forms in this way, we're gonna bink it, and a bull trap would be where we go up. Right, we go up. And at this point, inflation's still low, and there's no sign of a recession, and everything looks sweet, and they're maybe they're even still cutting rates. Who knows? They don't need to hike rates, and they're like, huh? The economy's fine. Macro looks fine. You know, that's the bull trap. That's what the bull trap would be. Because what would everyone be thinking? They'll be thinking like, oh my god, we can't possibly stop here because. We went down because they hiked rates. So they go, okay, well, what if they don't hike rates? We shouldn't go down, yeah? So that, that's, a, that's the most perfect scenario in my mind. I'm like, I'm ready for this three years in advance, okay? And I hope you are too. See, the beautiful thing is, if you just ignore all of this and you like look at your portfolio and you go, hey, you know, we've been rallying for 12 months in a row and it's now the third green yearly candle for Bitcoin and the four-year cycle and, and, and uh, my portfolio is up 35x. Hmm, if you just think that to yourself, at least you're going to be skeptical of that year. Oh, and, and then maybe a Bitcoin spot ETF comes. And I'm like, man, a Bitcoin spot ETF launches and Bitcoin is $150,000. Hmm, the top of all top signals. Like, it's not going to be rocket science, friends. What will be hard is looking at your emotions because you will see your portfolio up, say, 35x. And you will be listening to the influencers, right? There's too many even name their names. They're going to be telling you, those people who say we're going down know nothing, nothing. We're going 100x, okay? And you're going to want to believe that. How do we avoid that? Let's, there's only one way. The only one way to save yourself from getting trapped in the next crypto cycle top, this is the answer. It's to go super, giga, mega hard during the depression phase. You've got to fight the crowd who are 90% sidelined they'll believe any narrative at the next cycle top. Okay, so that's what I want you to know. You buy in the depression so that you are comfortable at the euphoria, okay? 
the weak soy drinker paper hands, they are going to buy in the hope and disbelief phase, and they're going to buy in the thrill and optimism, okay? I'm going to quickly get the Wall Street cheat sheet to show you, okay? So we have it here. They're going to buy in the hope and disbelief phase, yeah? You see here? They're going to buy hope and disbelief. We're going to be rinsing. That's if they're lucky. The first 20% are going to buy that. Then everyone's going to come in the optimism phase. In the optimism phase, this is where we actually probably break the high. This is Bitcoin breaking 60K, 70K, and belief. Everyone's like, time to get fully invested, right? Because look at that. I can see a world where people say, okay, look, what, what's going to make people say, now it's time to get fully invested? I think it would be more countries adopting Bitcoin, a Bitcoin spot ETF on the horizon. Um, more, more, you know, just more general bullish stuff. No interest rate hikes in, in the agenda. In no, no recession. People are working. Everything's cool. You know, maybe, oh, QE's turned back on the CBDC. Something, man. Anything. Something and anything. All right? doesn't even matter what it is. Just know that. If, look, this is all a function of the price. That's the most amazing part. The price dictates all okay price is value if the what you know what this this uh wall street cheat sheet all it's saying is if i send the price high enough i can get people fully invested that's what this whole sheet says right and also if i send the price low enough i can make people fight and i can make people want to jump off a cliff okay isn't that interesting okay so back to optimism this rally is real. That's us maybe breaking 70K. We're like, <gasps> you know, wow. Then belief. Time to get fully invested. And you look at these people coming who are going to get fully invested there. You're like, where were you buying the depression? Where were you? Where were you? We were yelling. Yelling to myself in cyberspace. Tweeting six times a day or saying, please, friends, lifetime of your opportunity. you got to buy now. I don't promise higher returns, but man, every bottom signal's flashed. They were nowhere to be seen, Okay. Because they're more of the, I want to buy after the confirmation type of style. And we know that's a poopy. Okay, you're going to get poopy results doing that. And then it's going to turn into a thrill. And that's where you know the danger starts. So if we just stay on belief, that's cool. But it never stays on belief, right? If everyone starts to get fully invested. It turns into thrill. Then the margin comes and obviously the euphoria. So that's all they are, man. We just want to avoid the top, you know. Looking at all of these, I often think as well. Okay, you know, well, if I'm waiting for this euphoria top, it made me think about what's the rest of the crowd thinking, you know? And I always, I always go, I check macro people, I check all of um, Twitter, YouTube, I even check the comments, I get a feel for, okay, what's everyone thinking, what's everyone thinking? And I lay it out here for you, right? So here it is, right? An unpopular opinion, unpopular opinion, right? I think volatility is gonna go down for stocks and crypto moving forward, right? Because I looked around me, here's the thing, right? Look, if there's one thing the crowd agrees on, it's that a big move down or up is going to come, okay? And I'm not mean, meaning this in terms of a one-month frame. I mean this over the next, like, couple of years, okay? I really do mean that because so many people have been desensitized. Look at this next point. Everyone is desensitized by the zombie virus, QE, rate hikes, war. Like, that's why I said, okay, we probably just fizzle. Like you're just literally, your brain's just fried. You have so many illicit substances. You literally, there's no more euphoria, man. You got no more dopamine. Like, ah. like it's just, what possibly can happen? I'm not joking. They literally need to land UFOs at the White House. And I'll be like, it's probably a sham because, you know, like, see what I mean? It's just, that's what, the, that's the extent they have to go to. You got to put a UFO somewhere and let us zoom into that and maybe like, see, oh, there's UFO in there. Anything else? Are you going to care? We just went through 0% interest rates and then max QE, QE infinite. And then they just flipped it the other way, right? And you've had Russia, Ukraine war, and they've done the fastest rate hikes ever. And there's high inflation and, and the fee, everyone's saying, oh my God, stocks are going to go nowhere for, for like 10 years, just like everything else. Like what else, man? Like what else? Like, we're just, we're fried. We're literally fried. Now, when I explain this to you, this, what this means is, it means it's priced in, okay? And we'll go down, we'll see, look. So the ex a, a crowd expects a huge down and up. And I'll say, because everyone expects wild moves, whoops, here we go, but because everyone expects wild moves, it's probably priced in, okay? 
or it's going to take another wild exogenous shock, right? Some people say black swan, but you don't really need a black swan. Just some sort of big shock, right? And shocks do come, but when you've thrown so many shocks in our face in the past two to three years, I'm like thinking, man, we, we've seen everything now. We've seen it, friends. You know, so that's what I'm saying. What's more of a shock than zombie virus, rate hikes, war? That's what I hear. I'm just saying, like, we're all fried. I think the market, everyone's just fried now. Everyone's just like, man... I don't even know what normal is anymore. You just you're throwing it up and down, and then this Fed guy talks, and he he says one word differently. Do you guys remember? There was a Fred Powell speech, and he got asked a question in the Q and A, and the market was like sideways after the presentation. Everyone's like, "Okay, we've avoided death." It's at the end of t- towards the I think October November 2022, and what happened was one of the journalists. Right, he misrepresented the chart. So Powell was like, you know, we're gonna have to leave rates higher, want inflation to come down, so everything should be sweet, right? And then the the president, the the journalist says to Powell, "Hey man, the market seems to be reacting really good to your message. Like it's going up, you know." And then because he said that to Jay Powell, Jay Powell reneged on his words. He's like, "Oh no no no, we're gonna have to go tougher on you guys, you know." He basically like gave the hint like. I don't know why the market's going up when we want you guys to get down and get crushed. And as soon as he said that, the S&P did like the biggest, fattest U-turn. It went down. So the guy got it wrong. We were down, right? But the guy, this noob journalist, he was looking at this little green part, this little L kick. He was like, oh, wow, you're going up. Completely forgetting we started from up here, right? And then as soon as they said that, Mark went, and crypto and everything just got destroyed. Oh my God, I remember that night. Oh, I remember everyone wanted to just kill this journalist guy. They just wanted to just throw eggs at him and just like, oh man. But it's funny, the market did what it always wanted to do, right? So it's not just really his fault. So think about this, man. That's why I said, maybe Jiggly time, Jiggly Puff times are ahead for us, you know? Jiggly Puff is a Pokemon, sings songs. It puts a character to sleep and you can do what you want, right? When they're asleep, maybe you can heal up, you can distract them, paralyze them, right? Pretty cool, right? So that's what I'm just thinking, man. I'm thinking maybe we get fried, right? And as a last Easter egg, at the bottom of the depression, so you're probably going to think, yeah, it's so easy, man. Just wait forever to start crying and just go all in. Well, not so easy, man, because I have an influencer here, right? And Alex. Alex likes Hex, likes Pulse, Chain, but he just, he made a critical error at the very, very end. So the whole cycle, he was sweet. And in this final phase, right at the end, near the depression phase, he basically said, it's so obvious how to predict crypto. We're going to go down. And he put on a leverage short, right? And that's his video just going through it, right? So look, this is the most important part from this tweet, okay? I've got for you. You don't forget the market is pricing in the future. Remember what I said earlier, man. Newbies and mega noobs. Noobs will look at today's information. And noobs will also look at yesterday's information. Okay? But the wealthy, the winners, they are looking at the future. All right? That's what we're trying to guess. And people who constantly tilt their minds towards that, they're the ones who win. Okay? So Alex made, Mr. Lorenzo, he made a mistake, right? Because he saw... He saw crypto go down, and then he saw rate hikes happen, right? Rate, rates go up. So he concluded with the whole rest of crypto, they said, well, crypto is only going down because the US dollar is going up and interest rates are going up. So it all makes sense, right? And they do this circular logic. And of course, yeah, it looks like it makes sense. But what happens, right? As they keep hiking at the bottom, the bottom happens. They're still hiking after this point, you know? We're still hiked after that low, friends. They still hiked into 2023, but the low was in early November 2022. So, look, I know it's hard. I know it's hard to grasp your mind around this, but I'm just, I'm here to tell you. Like, I'm not here to tell you what you like want to hear. It's what you need to hear. And what you need to hear is this. Most people are going to get it wrong. They're going to get it wrong because their logic and their path is going to reach the wrong conclusion at the wrong time. So, I'm praying that we're going to be able to see this euphoria coming. I'm praying some obvious top signals come, right? I'm looking for a Bitcoin spot ETF. I'm looking for Peter Schiff to get bullish. I'm looking for so 
many things. Maybe another country or a couple of countries follow El Salvador and make Bitcoin a national currency. Maybe Ethereum gets an ETF. I don't know, right? But I'm just, I'm hoping we get some obvious big top signs, yeah? And when we do, I'm going to be shouting from the rooftops and it's going to make me very unpopular again. But you know what? At least you were here. You were listening. You were paying attention. And you know, I, what I love is everyone is so supportive. I have so many people sending so much love saying, hey man, like, you know, my portfolio was 5K and then listening to you, I realized I was really underinvested and I've bumped it up to like 20K, you know? And I'm like, wow, that is awesome. And I think to myself, oh man, if this guy loses everything, it's all over. You know, on one side, a part of me says that, but on the other side, I'm thinking of, but you know what? If it's not over, then this person got four times richer just from my videos. Isn't that amazing? Four times richer just from spending 15 minutes listening to my videos. That's the power of my voice through the internet, friends. So, you know exactly what lesson to learn from this. You buy in the depression and you go super giga mega turbo hard because when the euphoria comes, you're not gonna be like that drug addict who says, please, please, sir, one more hit. It's 7 a.m. the next morning, sir. I don't need to go to work on Monday. You don't have to be that guy. You can say, you know what? My brain's fried enough, you know? I've had enough fun in the dungeon with the boys, okay? You can be that guy and say, hey, maybe I didn't make my 400X, but you know, 30 times my money was still pretty good while everyone else is begging for a 4X. How about that, friends? Until next time.